Hey everyone, it's Alex here with The Code Wolf. And today I wanna to talk about a cool new feature of ASP.NET 6 that I don't think is getting enough attention, which is the HTTP logging that's now built in. So here in Visual Studio, I have sort of an out of the box web API template. And I also have that running in Swagger UI in our browser. And so if we were to execute one of these endpoints, uh, you can see we get some basic weather data back just using those uh, built in template setups. Now, if we look at this, of course, we get the response back here, and this executed the request when we hit this button, but we don't really see any of the raw HTTP traffic that's going back and forth. If we wanna dig into those details more, we have to do a little bit of work. So in the past, .NET developers would often use something like Postman. So here you can see I have the same URL entered up here. And when I hit send, we get our response back but we can also look at these logs in Postman to see the raw request data if we wanna troubleshoot things or see exactly what was sent back and forth. Now, you could also set this up in .NET in your project, but it did require a bit of extra work or external packages and things like that. But now with .NET 6, it's actually built right into the framework here. So let's see how this works. So I'm just gonna stop our application and adding this is actually really easy. All we have to do is add a new middleware component to our pipeline using the app.useHttp logging method here. And this plugs in that logging middleware to our pipeline. And now whenever HTTP traffic comes in or out, it will log that for us. Now there's one sort of gotcha to this that took me a minute to figure out, and that's making sure our logging settings are correct. So we wanna open up this app settings.development.json since we're working in a dev environment here. And we wanna pay attention to this ASP.NET Core logging uh, setting here. So by default, it's set to warning and that's actually too high. That This will only log warnings or above in our app, so errors and warnings. But we actually want to lower this down to information so that data like HTTP logging will actually come through in our console output. So once you change that, and once you've got this middleware added, uh, we can run the app again, and let's see what this gives us now when we test this out. So over in our browser again, now let's expand this and test out our request. And at first glance, it'll seem like nothing is different, but now when we switch over to our console here, we can see that we actually get all of this logging in here. So for example, we can see our get request, and we can see the path, and a lot of these headers, such as the language and the encoding, and further down, we can also see the response information. So this was a 200, obviously, because our data came back. And it's all right here in the console, and we don't have to use any of those external tools or additional configuration, which is really nice. Now, one sort of issue with this, though, right now is if we go down to our post request, so we can just send weather data to our API, and it'll return that data or do something with it or whatever. But when we execute this request, you can see we do get a 200 back. But over in our console here, we actually don't see the request body. So this was a post request, and we can still see our path and headers and all that. But you can see it didn't actually log the, the JSON data that we sent over in the, in the body here. Now, we can fix that pretty easily because the HTTP logging includes some built-in settings for us. So I have this code up here that I'm just going to uncomment. And you can see that on this add HTTP logging, where we can actually register a service that includes some options for us. So here is where we specify which fields we want to log, and we can set that to all, which will include the body. You can specify things like just the headers or just the URL, but we're just gonna log everything. And I also want to mention that there are other options on this object if you wanna configure other things about logging. Uh, but this is probably one of the most common ones that you'll set. So let's run this again and see what changes this makes once uh, Swagger boots up again here. So now back on our browser, let's expand this post request again. And we still have our data here, but let's see what happens when we execute this now. Well, at first, the Swagger behavior will be the same, but if we were to go over to our console again, you can see this time the request body actually is logged and we can see the full request details there in addition to what we saw before. So I really encourage you to play around with this setting. I think it's actually very useful. Uh, when you're doing active API development, you're gonna be making a lot of changes to these endpoints and just you know configuring requests and what data is coming back and forth. And this can be a really nice option to not have to always switch over to an external tool or set up all kinds of custom logging yourself. 
and it's just a really great feature of ASP.NET 6. And I'm going to be covering more of those types of features that this new version offers. So hit subscribe if you like this content, and I'll see you in the next video.